Hey, this is Russ. We are headed to Prospect Heights again. I um, tried to decide which places I wanted to go to, and I, I felt that I hadn't been to Prospect Heights in a bit, so I figured I'd go and do that. Here's an interesting thing. As I'm riding along, I'm noticing that my front brakes do not have a whole lot of power to stop. It's kind of gliding along which tells me I think it's time to change the, uh, the brake pads. I mean, it's, uh, it's slowing it down, but it's not stopping it. So I can't go too fast. I've been testing out the brakes here. I think most of that stop is gonna come from the rear brake, and I think that's wearing down as well. So I think when I get back from this particular ride, I'm going to have to uh, swap out the brake pads. Now, if I'm going to do that, <laughs> I have to wonder whether I should change out the tires, uh, at least the front tire. Uh, my, my new Kenda tires from Rad Power Bikes came in yesterday from FedEx. Let me, let me tell you that story. <laughs> you know, FedEx has uh, not been my favorite shipping company lately because they, they tell you one thing and then they never show up with their stuff. They always push it off another day or two after they tell you it's going to be there. And sometimes you sit around waiting for it because you have to have a signature. Well, luckily, these tires don't need a signature, but I was home anyways. And uh, so, yeah, they were late by, uh, I think, two days from when they said that they would uh, actually give it to you. And um, the tires came in. Interestingly, uh, there was no packing of the tires. They were just zip tied together. <laughs> Two of them zip tied together and shipped. I guess there's really not much they can do to mess up a tire if you think about it. So does it really need a box? Uh, probably not. But of course the zip ties themselves um, aren't really the uh, the best things to use too because I noticed that the, the, the bead, the wire bead, uh, was slightly, slightly bent because maybe the zip ties got a little tight when they got grabbed and moved around and stuff. So yeah, not, not the greatest that way. I'm, I'm just hoping that it'll work okay. You know, it, it's slightly bent, not, not lots of bend. So hopefully with the, the air pressure going, going on there, it should straighten it back out. So maybe when I swap out the, uh, swap out the, the uh, brake pads, I'll change the front tire too. You know, cuz I always wonder if the front tire is time to do it or not time to do it. I was hoping to get more mileage out of this thing, and it probably will be able to if I wanted it. But uh Yeah, I don't I don't know. <laughs> probably safer to swap it out rather than try to grab out a couple hundred more miles out of it. Rear tire is doing okay. The rear tire used to be the front tire, of course. Rear tire is fine, so I'm going to uh, leave that alone until time comes to do it. Now, let, let me say something too. Since we know that the front brakes are wearing out, and uh, a comment came in before saying, why do you always blow off stop signs? If I was blowing off that many stop signs, my brakes wouldn't be uh, wearing out because I wouldn't be using the brakes. <laughs> but uh, obviously, I do use the brakes, otherwise it wouldn't be wearing out. So. All right, let's turn here. This is always the toughest uh, intersection because uh, there's oncoming cars and you don't know if they're coming or not because you can't really see them that well. All right, let, let me tell you real quickly too, the reason why I go to some of these other farther locations like this Prospect Heights Trail or the uh, Bussy Woods is because uh, it gives me some place to go rather than going around in a circle and not getting anywhere. So uh, I decided to prospect heights this time versus Bussy Woods because uh, it's a little bit closer compared to Bussy Woods. And I didn't feel like doing 40 miles of ride today. <laughs> I am using the uh, 52 volt battery, the 20 amp hour battery, and I'm riding mostly pedal assist level 3 with some throttle.
I'm finding that I'm using level three more often now because I know I have range. So I, I want to go a little faster. So I use three to move me along. You know, when I was really worried about my range, I'd even drop down to one just to try to save myself some, uh, some battery power. But, uh, yeah, since it's not really that much of a concern anymore, I do at least two and oftentimes three. All right, let's go through here. This is road construction, so gotta be a little more careful because this is essentially riding on gravel. It's all uh, packed up. And, you know, even that experience riding on that, that's it, it kind of tells me that that I'm not really a gravel person because I don't feel comfortable going over it. And if you don't feel comfortable going over the gravel and you're trying to ride gravel roads, uh, trails, yeah, it's not a good idea for you to do it if you don't feel comfortable doing it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm going to be strictly a person on paved roads. I know that. So yeah, the Kenda tires came in. Um, here's another thing that came in. Uh, Donut Jim has re received his electric XP 2.0 bike. <laughs> he sent me a text yesterday and told me that the day before um, he received his bike. So that would have been, what, Tuesday? He said that uh, he contacted Electric saying that he had never received his bike. And of course, both Electric and himself thought for sure it would have been there by that time so electric I guess contacted FedEx and said you know we're gonna put a claim in for this thing because it's not here <laughs> and that very next day it shows up I guess sometimes you need to put a fire under this company just to get them to make their deliveries <laughs> I've heard that before in the past from other people saying that it took the company to call to complain that you know that, that their uh, their uh, customer didn't receive the product and then they finally deliver it. So he says it's uh, almost exactly to the day, 11 weeks from when he ordered the bike until when he got it. So I'm waiting to hear back from him to find out how his first ride went. And uh, he sent me a photo of it showing me that it was built. So it looks nice and all. So I'm anxious to hear back from him and find out how he did. So eventually, we will try to try to uh, ride uh, somewhere together. He, he does not live near me, but uh, he does have a truck. <laughs> His bike does fold up so he can transport it. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll do Bussy Woods or, or maybe we'll do this uh, uh, Prospect Heights Trail or something like that. Now I do know that he's a little bit of camera shy and he doesn't want to be on the camera. <laughs> so I don't know how that would work out. So he might ride with me, but you may never see him. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay too, not a problem. Now I've noticed too, just being out on the road today, Schools must be back in session because I've seen a lot of buses and a lot of kids. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think they're headed back to school already. But since I, uh, I don't have any kids in school, I don't go to school, I don't recall exactly when the dates are that kids go back. But apparently they're back. Well, it seems early to me. I know, I know when I was growing up, um, I don't think we started school until around Labor Day, something like that. But uh, kids, kids are back in school already. Certain kids, maybe not all. I don't know if the Chicago public schools, if the kids are back in school. Here out in the suburbs, uh, around my area, the kids are back in school. At least high school kids are. I, all the, all the kids I seen seemed to be a little older, but I, I didn't notice any little kids. <laughs> it 
So, I think they all go back around the same time, don't they? I don't know. Those of you guys who have kids, let me know. <laughs> when are your kids going back to school, or are they already back? Like, right up ahead of us is a school bus. So, I've been seeing a lot of these school buses riding around today. And you know, too, that I, I don't start my camera right away when I start. I, I usually ride about a mile or two before I actually turn it on. So, I've already seen a bunch. Okay, now, now here's, here's some kids that were just running. <laughs> so, not all of them are in school, obviously. Some kids are, some kids are not. I don't know. kind of overcast today. I, I don't mind overcast days because it's not hot. But the last few days have been very hot and rainy. So, um, nice change of pace. Now, in the last couple videos I did, I just used the uh, camera microphone. So, if you heard a lot of whining from my tires, it's probably because of the uh, camera mic picking up the, the wine from the tires. The whining from the tires. I'm, I'm using the digital audio recorder that's strapped to my belt behind me right now. The lavalier microphone on my helmet. That is the better audio, quite frankly. But it is also more work. <laughs> you know, Every now and then I feel like eh, it's too much stuff to, to bring, too much stuff to do, turning on and off a couple of items. So if you, if you hear sometimes the audio is a little different, you know it's coming from the other mic, from the camera mic. And uh, if, you're, if you're picking up a lot of background noise, it's probably the camera mic. So, and it just means I'm being lazy and not wanting to do um, the better microphone. Now you notice too, there's no camera facing me, and that's only because I need to use the map again. And whenever I need to use the map, I, uh, I can't use that camera because I need the map on my phone. Alright, now the last couple times I come here, they've been doing road construction, and that of course causes a detour. The map program does terrible when it comes to detours. It, uh, it doesn't know where you are. The map physically spins in circles. <laughs> All right, when I say it's going in circles, I'm not just uh, exaggerating that. I'm telling you, it actually spins in circles. And then it keeps telling you to keep following a certain path which you are no longer on. So if you use the map program called Bike Map, you got to know what direction you're headed. Kind of keep an idea that you've gone off the track and then you have to go back to it, otherwise the map is never going to be able to figure it out. See now, we will eventually need to take a left. I already know that. The map program is telling me to take a right and the map is spinning in circles. <laughs> so you got to... <laughs> You got to know that this map program won't work well if you don't follow exactly what it tells you to do. I still use it only because it picks out the roads that I prefer to use. Other map programs have not been that good with that. So... So where are we at? We're at 1626 miles and it's essentially time now to change out at least the front brake, but I'm going to change it both, I think. Right, let's 
Let's take the left here. See if that brings us back to where we need to be. Um, yeah, I think I will change out the front tire. <laughs> since I'm already going to be messing with the brake. I'll change out the front tire as well. So my hopes of getting 2,000 miles with the front tire, yeah, it's not going to happen. Looks like it's going to be around 1,600. All right, this thing's telling me to change out the camera, so let me do that. Hold on. All right, I'm back up. Yeah, I always put the 16 minute timer on there so that I don't end up losing you guys again like I usually do. <laughs> okay, this thing still says road closed, but you really can't go here, we gotta pass it up. Yeah, so I came back in too early. All right, well, let's keep going. Let's see what happens. Uh, that's a big, uh, <laughs> big bump. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a lot of road construction around here. You might hear the map program keep telling me to continue here, continue there. Well, it's wrong. <laughs> All right, so now it's telling me to go right, which is correct. Alright, so the pro program seems to have figured out that I am now on a different path. Let's follow along, see what it tells us to do. Alright, it has figured it out. Yeah, I think uh, front brakes are goners. Kind of hear it scratching a little bit, so not too good. I probably should head back, <laughs> but I'm too far in, so we'll just keep going. I've never changed the brakes out before, so I don't know how to do it. I'm going to have to watch some videos, find out what the way to do it. I, I heard that uh, it's a little more difficult than you think it is. So, so I'll have to look it over, find out how it's done. I'm using more of the rear brake right now, but the rear brake doesn't really stop you as quickly as the front brakes will. It kind of just feathers things along, slows you down, but it doesn't necessarily um, stop you quickly. So the map program has found me and uh, brought me back to where it should be, but man, it took a while for it to figure out that I was no longer going the way it wanted me originally to go. <laughs> well, at least it figured it out. keep moving yeah I, I did look at those other map programs you know I I'll tell it where I want to go and then I'll follow along by just moving the map sections to see which roads they actually picked and many of them actually still picked uh, roads that have a lot of traffic 
uh, this bike map program seems to always pick roads that has been designated as bike roads because I'll see uh, you know signs on the road that says bike so I think it it kind of uses that first and then if you have no choice if there's no other option then it brings you to the major road because sometimes you have to um, I mean there's other there's other villages and cities I, w I would like to, to hit with the bike but I know that in order to do that I actually have to um, I actually have to uh, go on some major roads and that's why I haven't gone to those cities or villages they call it around here like there's Buffalo Grove I have not hit that because to get to Buffalo Grove I've got to go on like Lake Cook Road which is look for local guys you know that that's a really busy road I don't want to do that so I'm, I'm kind of stuck in certain areas unless I'm willing to, to ride on those roads um, maybe one day I would do it but safety wise really it's best that I don't like even here we're gonna be coming up to Palatine Road but the only reason I like doing it here is because we're in the uh, slower section of Palatine Road because it is a divided highway here. As you can see in front of me all those cars that were passing that's on a sec section that's not uh, where we're gonna be on. We're, we're on the side over here. <laughs> Eventually we have to cross it to get it get to where we're going but you know crossing is not so bad. The, the only thing with this road is that when I do need to make the left turn I want another car sitting in front of me before I actually make that left turn because it's got to trigger the left turn signal thing or at least trigger the uh, the, the, the stoplight and I don't have enough metal to trigger it so as I approach it I have just stopped along the side of the road waiting for a car to go ahead of me and when I see it then I, I move my, my bike to that lane. I gotta get into the left turn lane, that's why. So Yeah, let me bring up another thing. Um, I recently saw a comment from one of our viewers. I don't know if he's a subscriber, I hope he is. Uh, and he mentioned that uh, he, he had to wonder whether the uh, the negative comments I got from the one guy near Busty Woods, you know, is what prompted my cheater videos, uh, wasn't racially motivated. Um, yeah, you know, I wondered about that too, whether it was or it wasn't. I didn't want to go down that path. I just assumed that he didn't uh, like the fact that I passed him. I don't know whether he noticed that I was Asian or not. All right, I'm not gonna make that light. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wait again. Um, but yeah, I had to wonder about that. You know, my comment to him back, if, if you actually see that comment, uh, I'm gonna move off to the side here for a second, and wait for a car to get to that left turn lane. All right, so there's the car I need. Is he gonna be on the left? No, he's gonna be on the right. Well, is he gonna turn? No, nope, he's taking a right turn. So we're gonna pull off and wait again. <laughs> yeah, brakes are squeaking. So anyways, um, here's the car. Well, he's moving to the right as well. Is he gonna turn? No, he's not gonna turn, but at least he's there, that'll trigger it. Yeah, so this whole thing with the Asian um, thing, I didn't want to go down that path but since he mentioned it, uh, I mentioned back to him that, um, you know, the thing is, when you're picking on Asians, 
you don't know whether <laughs> that Asian person knows martial arts or not, and many of us do. So you don't want to really get in an altercation with an Asian person. And this is why I noticed too, a lot of times when we've had these Asian hate things happen, you notice these guys are picking on old Asian ladies. That's pretty cowardly. That's because they kind of figured these, these little old ladies probably don't know martial arts, they can't defend themselves, and they'll sucker punch them. Talk about a cowardly act, right? Let me see them try doing that with like a 30-year-old Asian guy. Let's see what happens then. A lot of these guys are MMA fighters and the like. Let's see what happens at that point. <laughs> So, you know, for me, I have a martial arts background, but, you know, I can't kick anymore, not with my bad knees. But that doesn't mean I still don't have uh, arms and hands. <laughs> but I still have to wonder how much I can still do, because Taekwondo is mostly kicking. My natural instinct would be to kick, but I can't do that anymore. So. So we're turning here. So we're very close to the Prospect Heights Trail. You know, these bike videos are very long. I know that. And I know that not everyone watches the entire amount. That's why I always wonder whether I should just break this stuff into two sections. One is the one that gets you there, and then one that you go past it. But then other times I kind of say, well, getting you there and not bringing you in it <laughs> seems like it, it kind of defeats the purpose. So that's why I just let it run a lot of times and make it one big, huge, long video. So we are at the path. All right. We have arrived. Okay. Well, let's pull over and fix up the the, the cameras again. <laughs> just just because. Hold on a second. All right. I'm back. <laughs> back on the bike. Yeah, the brakes are definitely uh, in need of changing. I'm gonna have to try to avoid hitting the uh, right brake as much as I can. Morning. Uh, not right brake, I'm sorry, <laughs> the front brake. And I will say that uh, I do feel like I have less, less traction on the, on the turning. Is that the proper word, traction? <laughs> less grip? Let's say that. So maybe it is time to change out the tire. Yeah, I was kind of hoping I'd get a little bit more mileage out of this thing, but apparently not. And my camera's bouncing around too. <laughs> so many, so many issues. Uh, you know, I put a little bit of white uh, duct tape on the bottom of that um, the, the camera mount where it screws onto the chest mount just to kind of keep it in place better because otherwise it kind of spins around. I think that's got got to be fixed too because the, <laughs> the gripping of that is not gripping too well anymore. It's not sticky enough. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of things need to be done. So yeah, it's been a while since I've been on the Prospect Heights thing. I've been doing Bussy uh, more uh, because it's new, it's longer, but I still like this trail. The problem with this trail though is that uh, you've got to cross a lot of streets. So you're always on and off the bike as you're crossing the streets. But it is relaxing, uh, because I don't have to think too much. It's better than being on streets, where you're constantly having to be on your toes, to, because you got cars coming and everything. Oh, this guy's 
stop it for us. Yeah, when cars stop for you, it makes it a lot easier. They don't have to. Nothing tells them that they have to, but sometimes drivers just let you go through, which is nice. So yeah, 1629 for mileage so far. I suppose when I'm done today, I'll be about 1640 something, something like that maybe. I gotta change out the tire, change out the brakes. Yeah, today is a nice day, uh, but I know it's going to get hotter later. Forecast showed that it was going to get up to, like, I don't know what it said, 91 or something? Well, as long as I'm not outside when that happens, I'll be okay. Yeah, see, there's nice people all the time. People wave hello to you, say hello to you, nod their head, do whatever. That, that makes uh, riding a lot more fun, I think. People have asked why I don't ring the bell on everybody. Come on, like this guy with his dog, he doesn't need the bell. <laughs> really, he, he's dealing with his dog over there. Plus, you want to scare the dog? <laughs> no way. Sometimes ringing the bell is not a smart move. Now this area of the path is industrial. This is, uh, I think we're actually in Wheeling. Wheeling is more of an industrial town. It's not like they don't have residential, because they do, but um, it's known more for its uh, industrial sections. And we're coming up to the area where the electrical stuff is high tension wires. That's where the trail was flooded before. Now we've had some heavy rains recently. I'm wondering if this thing is going to be flooded or not. Let's see. Yeah, it is actually flooded. How do you like that? No, not a lot, but there's definitely water there. I'm going to go through it really slowly. It's not as heavy as it was before. Let's put it that way. See the water on the path here? Go down a little bit. Let's go slowly through it. Let it wash off my uh, tires here. Look at that, wash that off. <laughs> when you uh, go over mud and things like that, yeah, these tires pick it up and it looks terrible. So get a good washing there. Having the fenders really pays off, I will say that because without it, that thing would have been splashing me all over the place. Still splashes you a little bit. I, I still feel a little bit has gotten on my legs because I'm, I'm wearing shorts as I usually do. Washed off with dirty water. Uh, ahead of us is the Metra. You see that train? In the distance there? You hear it? That's, uh, that's the metro train. That's the one that goes downtown. So you, you jump on that, it'll bring you all the way downtown. Really, that is the way to do it. And uh, our subscriber, John, keeps asking me, when are we doing downtown? When are we hitting the lakefront? Well, that would be the only way for me to do it. I don't know how you would do it with the bike quite frankly. And if I had to lift that bike onto that thing, 
it would be hard for me to do because this is not a lightweight bike, especially with all the batteries on it. Good morning. Um, so I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. What time is it here? 8.28. 8.28. So it's still early in the morning for some people this is early I actually got a late start because I was answering uh, answering uh, the comments that's been left on my channel I did that before I left you know I used to be able to answer these things almost immediately but once I started riding my bike uh, that kind of took up most of my morning times so if you make a comment early in the morning chances are you won't hear back from me that quickly simply because I'm out riding my bike but then I usually answer you back the minute I get home okay not the minute I get home the minute I get home I go up jump in the shower <laughs> after all that all right So yeah, I have a lot of fun on the bike. I think it's really changed what I've done this whole uh, summer. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have the bike this summer. I know last year <laughs> I didn't do a whole lot of anything. You had the pandemic going on and, and uh, the knee was still hurting. So um, this year has been quite a bit different. And really, you know, when I started this channel, I wasn't really sure what the channel would be about. I talked a little bit about this, a little bit about that. I did some cooking stuff, some barbecue stuff, um, you know, on the smoker. And, um, and then the knee replacement happened. It turned into a knee replacement channel. And now I do the knee replacement stuff along with the bike stuff. And looking back, I think really in a sense the bike thing really has always been what I really always wanted to do because it is the one thing that I always had an interest to continue to do but was never able to do it because of the knee so you think about how many years that's been since I've had knee problems but um, you know I've, I've owned several bikes in my lifetime and you know, I have the mountain bike that I, I bought and then I just couldn't really use it for so many years so I think I was destined to do some type of bike channel I didn't think it was gonna be an e-bike but thinking back okay let me tell you this story I've always wanted an e-bike you know as I thought about it I've wanted an e-bike since I was a little kid I remember do you guys remember the Sears catalog <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, we looked through the Sears catalog and we see a bunch of things and I remember they had bicycles that had motors on them. Um, they, I don't know if they were gas powered motors back then or I don't think they were electric. But I remember people would add these motors to their regular bikes and I always thought, wow, that would be cool, you know, to be able to get on your bike and an electric motor would help you ride. I remember thinking that as a kid. So if you think about it, I've always been destined to get an electric bike, even as a little kid. Yeah, I always looked at the guitars, uh, silver tone guitars and amplifiers back in the days of the Sears. Don't know if they're any good, but back in those days, uh, you know, that was better than what I had. <laughs> okay, that's not true. It was better than what I had for maybe the first few months. My dad bought me a cheap $59 guitar at Corvettes. I told you about Corvettes before. That's where I bought uh, my first bike, my first road bike. Then it fell apart. <laughs> um, he bought me this $59 guitar. Maybe it was $89, $79, I don't know, something. And then just a few months later, he bought me a Fender Telecaster. So yeah, I only had a bad guitar for a very short time. <laughs> 
know, that thing was so bad that, you know, it hurt your fingers when you pushed down on the strings because uh, the action was so bad on it. So I don't know if the silver tones are any better or any worse, probably similar. <laughs> but I remember those things were inside the, uh, the Sears catalog. Stop here. All right, this guy's letting me through. Yep, sometimes cars do stop and let you through. So yeah, I was destined to have a, an electric bike. It took me all these years. I'm 62 and a half ish, something like that. So, good morning. It took me all these years. I was probably like 10 years old looking at the Sears catalog. <laughs> so what it took me 50 years to get an electric bike. <laughs> yeah, roughly around 50 years to get an electric bike. So now, more people are gonna have electric bikes. We already know that. It's coming. So those who don't like e-bikes, get used to it because there's gonna be a lot more on the road. <laughs> You're just gonna have to keep your eyes out for them. Prices will come down, I'm sure they will. Right now, it's still rather expensive for the average person. Um, you're probably talking at least $1,000 or more. Not everybody could afford that, I know that. But I think eventually, things will come down. And if it doesn't come down in price, uh, you'll get better bikes for the price. Let's, let's say that, if it doesn't come down. Yeah, but the, you know, I was looking at some of the older YouTube videos on e-bikes and uh, even just three, four years ago, they were still talking uh, 36 volt batteries. Well, hey, now we're talking 48, 52, I think there's 70 something too. I don't know, I don't know what the, the maximum is. Good morning. So, um, you're getting more for your money now. As the batteries improve, you're gonna get more range. You can get more torque because the motors will improve and everything. So yeah, it's just gonna get better and better. So will I end up with a more advanced e-bike? I don't know, down the road. But right now, I'm pretty happy with the performance of what it's doing. I don't need the fastest bike. I know that. I don't, I don't really care to have the fastest bike. I would like one with more torque, so I can make sure I can get up every single hill. Some hills I have a hard time with this bike. So, who knows, I might get better. Anyways, this thing's telling me that we're up on time. So, I appreciate you guys following along, coming with me on this long ride. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time.